two years ago, somebody asked me if we use AI in our drug discovery research at Rakavina Therapeutics. And at that point, what's going on, guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital, and we're here with Rakovina Therapeutics. We have Artem Cherkasov, member of Scientific Advisory Board and advisor on the medicinal chemistry and AI drug discovery. Jeffrey Bacha, uh, MBA executive chairman, and Mads Dregard, president and chief scientific officer. So how are you gentlemen doing today? Very well, well thank you. Hello. Yeah, it's great to have you on. So can we start by talking about the company? Tell us a bit more about the company, what you plan to achieve. Sure, thanks, Aaron. Um, you know, we started Rackabina Therapeutics um, in 2021 um, and to focus really on DNA damage response targets, which has become a very important area in the field of cancer research. There's a first generation class of drugs known as PARP inhibitors, which have been game changing for certain types of breast and ovarian cancer, for example, um, but they have limitations. So we wanted to focus on you know, overcoming some of those limitations and developing better therapies. And as the world has dug in deeper to the DNA damage response field, there are a number of very important targets that uh, Big Pharma and, and companies like Rakovina Therapeutics are focusing on to develop new and better targeted treatments uh, for cancer. Great. So bringing a new molecule to market traditionally incurs immense costs and lengthy timelines. How do you envision AI transforming this paradigm for Rakovina Therapeutics, particularly in terms of reducing costs and accelerating the process? Yeah, um, I mean, the, the main benefit here is is the reduction of the time it normally takes to develop a drug. Um, with uh, with deploying AI, we we will be able to to you know reduce uh, you know the time for drug development from from years to to basically months. Um, and so the speed of of how fast we can move is is probably the main thing. And and as you can imagine, that also reflects the cost. Because if we can move a lot faster than we normally would be able to do, then then that would be a massive cost reduction in, in drug development. Of course. So clinical trial failures are a significant challenge in drug development, particularly in cancer research, where over 90% of drugs fail during trials. How can AI-driven drug discovery mitigate this risk? And what strategies does Rakovina Therapeutics employ in this regard? Yeah, um, so what AI can really do is that it can uh, test billions of possible combinations and compounds in a very, very short time frame. And um, that uh, process is basically uh, will increase the likelihood that you will hit something very significant uh, within a, a short time frame. And, and that will continuously support uh, the success in clinical trials, um, because the more accurate you can be in the drug development phase, the more information you can put into to the molecules uh, using AI, the, the more the likelihood of success will be. So the DA damage response field is highlighted as ideal for AI-driven strategy. Could you elaborate on why this is the case and how Rakovina Therapeutics plans to leverage AI within this specific domain? Yes, um, I mean, AI in drug development can, in principle, be utilized in, in any area, but um, AI, although it's very smart, it, it still needs training uh, to become really, really smart. Um, and the training of the AI depends on information that is already out there in the public domain. And um, in the DDR or DNA damage response space, there's a uh, ample information already out there about what works and what does not work. And that's exactly the type of information that the AI needs to really uh, succeed um, in, in the drug development. So, so that's mainly the reason why the DDR space is ripe for the AI technology now. So the deep docking platform is a cornerstone of Rakovina Therapeutics approach. Could you explain how it differs from other AI methodologies and why it's considered to be more powerful in drug discovery. So the deep docking is an approach we've developed uh, about four years ago uh, in the wake of COVID pandemics, when uh, the world was pressed with need to develop new drugs and develop it super fast. And so really that's also AI became a mature enough tech. We could bring it on drug discovery and just happened that we merged 
uh, this needs together and we develop this deep docking. So uh, in a way, it's very mature technology in AI terms because, you know, the world now is, is racing for AI developed drugs and a lot of companies try to do it. We've been doing it for quite some time. So the technology is already proven. It's been out there. It demonstrated very good results for developing COVID drugs. Uh, technologically, again, I don't want to go into many details, but what uh, deep docking is, it's called active learning. So basically, this is an iterative process when whatever comes out of computational wet lab, for that matter, from experiments, uh, AI incorporates into you know, inner thinking, into computation. And so the approach becomes more and more and more powerful as you keep using it. And so this active learning uh, specifics of, of deep docking make it really unique and super useful. So aside from molecular design, can the deep docking platform predict and optimize for other critical drug properties? How does this capability contribute to Rakovina Therapeutics drug development efforts? So uh, just to mention deep docking is not the only approach, AI approach we can use, because again, we are one of the most established and longstanding groups here in the, the University of British Columbia in terms of AI and drug discovery. So in theory, deep docking and many other AI methods can what we call de-risk drug discovery process, because we can factor in all other properties a drug should have in order to make it to the market. And so if previously that would be kind of experimental trial and error approach, and that's why the success rate of developing new drug is not very good. Now with the use of AI, we can factor that in, kind of dial it in very early on into very early molecular design. And so the chances of making it through, making good drug are much, much higher. And that's where we strive with Rakavina to develop new compounds, new drugs with much factored in properties, uh, hoping the success will be sooner and with higher chances. So the company has seen successes with this deep docking platform in various projects, including the UBC Roche deal and COVID-19 initiatives. Could you share some key achievements of the platform and how they've impacted the company's trajectory? Uh, again, in terms of using this in, in my research, because my main work is, again, with the University of British Columbia, we've been using computers and drug discovery for 20 years. And initially, 20 years ago, we would use terms AI and uh, neural networks and stuff like that. But the reality was that it wasn't yet real intelligence, wasn't yet AI. So computers were powerful, uh, really helpful in developing new drugs. And for instance, my group was involved in developing eight drugs so far, which is quite a lot, probably more than many companies have. Uh, and just in recent years, the real AI emerged. So we could see the decision-making being done by computers in a way already. So the technology is matured now. And so we're hoping to see really a transformational shift in drug discovery within the next couple of years even. So the race for first AI developed drug is on now. So companies compete for that. And uh, we really, intend to fully capitalize on this AI momentum. Very exciting. So with the recent announcement impacting the development of the LEAD KT3000 series, how does Rakamina Therapeutics plan to utilize the deep docking AI platform to enhance the series further? Additionally, what specific features are being targeted, such as brain penetration, and how will they benefit the program? Sure. The, the KT, KT3000 series, our, our lead program, is continuing to advance toward clinical trials. Um, the data that's been presented there, both in publications as well as scientific meetings, demonstrates that the dual functionality of the molecule is, is able to overcome treatment resistance in first-generation PARPA members, which is a, a major unmet medical need. The AI platform will allow us to accelerate enhancement features to that, such as brain penetration, uh, but initially, we will be focusing the AI on a separate series, um, which is the KT2000 series, PARP inhibitors that are PARP1 specific with good brain penetration. Um, that is certainly going to be an opportunity to create a best-in-class molecule, uh, best-in-class drug candidate uh, in a very rapid time frame. Well, thank you for all the information, gentlemen. It's very interesting and exciting what you're doing, utilizing AI for drug development. I look forward to tracking your progress, updating the community in the future. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you so much.